Okay. I've been asked by people pretty regularly, how you make them pins? How you make get all that acrylic and the wood and all that together? So, I decided to make this video to show y'all. And we're going to take some normal wood like this and we're going to end up with a pin like that. So y'all just sit back and watch. Alright, <clears throat> this morning I'm going to show y'all how I make a some of these hybrid blanks. This one here is made out of a, a deer antler. This is made out of some desert iron wood. You, know, you can even use things like this and made out of just some uh, peas, some dried peas seeds. And then you got one like this out of deer horn. And basically I have two different types, types of uh, molds that I've made. And I could use these two, and then you have these two. And they're all the silicone mold, so you'll need some stone or urethane to go with it. Now, the epoxy I use for it is the Alumilite Slow Clear. And you'll need a scale because it gets mixed one-to-one uh, -one by weight. And you'll need you a vacuum pot. Uh, this in here I made just out of an old paint pot I got from Harbor Freight, and it works pretty good for this small stuff. I made me a tower that I can put my molds in. That way I can pick them up, move them around, and set them in there. And you'll need a little oven there so you can warm everything up, make sure it's good and dry. Now, uh, what I've got, what I'm using to make these is I got some wood from Hawaii when I was over there last year working. I got me some of this koa wood. I got the uh, mango. And this pheasant wood. Now this pheasant wood is probably the most expensive wood I've ever bought. but Couldn't pass it up since I was in Hawaii. Alright, now... With these blanks right here, all this stuff has been stabilized. And I get my stabilizing compound and my Alumilite stuff, both from Turntex. Uh, they carry all that material. So if you're stabilizing them, you don't have to worry about them holding as much moisture. Now they will, they may still have a little bit in there, but not enough to flex. But you need to clean all this bleed out off of it because you can see the bleed out on there and it depends on the type of wood how much bleed out you have so first i'm going to do that i'll take these outside we'll go to the sander we'll sand them down get the wire brush on the grinder and, and brush it all off to where it's just wood and then the uh, alumilite and the color will adhere to it real well now, <clears throat> some of these, these edge pieces will work great in here. They'll make good, I love the edge pieces to make the uh, molds out of. Now, these that don't do edge pieces, once I clean them up, I'll probably uh, take a, got a hatchet, and we'll split them. And once they split... If they split okay, then we'll stick them in there and do that. Or, you get them small enough pieces, you can put them in there. So, there's several different ways to do this. And basically, you can make a, a hybrid blank out of just about anything you can turn. Whether it be, you know, pea seeds, deer horn, uh, any type of wood, any type of acrylic. I even have one of Coulter pine cones over there. And I have some of them pieces off of it that I'm going to make some bigger blanks for like the shaving brushes and stuff to make hybrids. So you can really make, I mean, you can get creative and make anything. And these are just the basic simple steps and things that you're going to do. Now, I won't be narrating the whole video. I'm just going to fast forward through a lot of it so you can see 
what I do and how it's done, and then we will show you the finished product. Okay, I got my three different types of wood here prepared. Uh, get your stoner. Put a little bit in your mold. All that does is just add a little oil. That is silicone. And the uh, acrylic lumilite ends up pulling some of the moisture or some of the oil out of that silicone so this replaces it so it will separate easily uh, so first of all i want to do these because these are my smaller pieces so you just take some of these smaller pieces and drop them in there you know you can even add some of uh, that in there get some color combinations going maybe not 
yeah. We'll do it like that there. I always like to leave some sticking out of these, and that helps to remove them once you're cured. It keeps stuff from floating to the top. Now we'll do something in there. Shove that down there. And then in there. Now we got them two. This is the koa wood. And if you make these to size, whether you want three quarter or seven eighths, then they will fit pretty snug. You ain't got to worry about taping them down or floating out. And if you really make them snug, then sometimes it'll kind of curve out like it's doing on this one. But that's okay. And then you can stick that in there. Now, your blanks, my blanks ain't going to be perfectly square, but, you know, if you wanted to, you could take, let's see here. I could take this one and this one out. Well, that in there looks a little thicker. I put one, this one here. We'll do something like, ah, oh, which one is unique? Let's do something like this here. Something like that there. And there we go. We just got two different types of wood. One of them's a little thicker. This here, I think, yeah, this in here, I made it. The wood block's a little bit bigger when I made that mold. But we'll do the same thing there. We'll use that. Take that there. That sort of like that. We'll take this one here. Go like that. There you go. Now we're going to take all this, move it to the oven, set it around 100 degrees, let it warm uh, up the mold, the wood, any moisture in there will kind of cook out of it. You know, you can even throw a piece in there like that, like this. And I may do that to some of it, and that just any of them extra little pieces just gives it kind of a little extra when you're adding. There we go. But you get the point, and you can just play with it and have fun with it. But I'm going to stick these over there for about 100 degrees for a couple hours just to kind of warm up the wood and kind of heat up and remove any humidity out of it. They're all stabilized, so it shouldn't be moisture soaked into it, but you want to alleviate the moisture because the uh, aluminum light will show moisture in it if you have moisture in there so it's better just stick everything in the oven and warm it warm it up I got all my mixture out and ready. Seeing this is stuff is from Hawaii, I'm gonna try and make a like a seascape. So I got some sapphire blue, coral reef blue, and just some pearl basics, which is like a white pearl. And these usually make a pretty good uh, ocean type theme. But now this alumilite, remember it is one to one by weight. So you do your scale, you get it mixed up clear in here real good. I divide it out into my three little cups, mix it with colors, I'll pour it in here, stack it in there, bring the pressure up to about 40 PSI and let it sit for a couple hours. It says one and a half to two hours, usually I go to three to four hours just to make sure everything's done because when you put that pressure on it, if you got any pockets in there and it ain't cured enough when you let the pressure off, it's going to blow out, back out. So with it being small pieces like it is, there is chances of small bubbles somewhere, but that's just a part of it. But since this is the slow, it's a 12-minute working time. 
And you think, well, that's a lot of time, but it isn't really. So you just have to uh, move with a purpose. You know, go ahead and do it and move with a purpose. That way you get everything done in time because it's mixing, dividing, mixing, pouring, putting in there and put pressure on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started.
Okay, now I got just over 40 pounds there. Uh, and you see, I can make a mess anywhere. But I used to do all that kind of stuff up here, so that's why you see all that there. But now I'm going to clean up my mess. I'm going to watch this, make sure I ain't losing pressure anywhere for the next few minutes in case I got to stick a little more in. And then we'll come back in a couple hours and pull it out. Now we have us some ocean theme blanks with a Hawaiian wood and the ocean colors. Uh, and you can always get on a saw and trim these up, but now we're ready to make some pins. But the only thing is it takes about a week for this to really uh, uh, cure. So right now, I say this is still pliable. So I give it another week, let it cure the rest of the way, and then they'll be ready. Okay, now that all our blanks have cured completely, and really it's been probably a month since I started this video, work and life is just Gotten in the way of fun things, but that's what happens. But I got two of the round ones and four of these square ones I'm going to do with the different types of wood from Hawaii, like y'all seen me make. And I got these uh, Sea Life Rollerball Pin Kits from Wood Turnings. And they come with, you can get various amounts of clips. You get the shark, you got a uh, mermaid and we got a dolphin and the one that i got these for basically is the seahorse and my wife's favorite sea animal is the seahorse and so when i found these this is why i'm making these for her or making one of them for her and the rest of them for sale but uh, i put it off way too long so it's time to get finished uh i'm gonna get the cutting and drilling and gluing so I can get this done.
All right, now all these tubes come pretty polished. Uh, I've done most of them. I use, uh, I got 150 here, just a little bit of emery cloth and roughing them up. Now I'll just clean them up some and allow the glue to stick. But there you go, you got them. And let's slide these up out the way here. Got me a little push rod to push them in. My stick fast. And this is a medium if you can't see it. And I get all my, my glues and stuff off of Amazon. It's just easier and quicker to order them that way. And y'all gotta forgive me if I get out of camera. I'm not good at this camera stuff. Uh, I've had several people over the years tell me, well, you need to start making a video of what you do so everybody can see how they do it. Uh, I finally got the courage up enough to do that. And... Sometimes it works good, and sometimes it's not so good. But you just want to put the glue on there pretty liberally. And then work it in to both sides down in there. Make sure it's good and coated inside. And then you can countersink both ends. And it's ready. And you just do this with all of them. Okay, now there we go. Now a lot of places say that this glue will cure in about 30 minutes. But I want to uh, warn you that sometimes stuff don't always cure as fast as they say. I like to give it a couple hours at least Usually I'll do all this in the morning and I can come back in the afternoon and and start working to finish them up. But on that, that is critical because if that glue breaks loose and then you go to uh, bore them out, which I've done before, and it's too quick, and you stick your turner in there and all of a sudden it grabs the tube and just starts spinning it. So uh, just give yourself plenty of time for this. And if you'll notice this blue mat, I got them on Amazon. That works pretty well because it don't stick to the mat. These little thin ones like this here, they do okay as well, but they they tear pretty easily. And these here are just more durable. And they have a little magnet up there, so when I go to building, all my parts will stick to it. But anyway, uh, whenever this cures, we'll get back and finish them up.
Now these here are pretty simple to put together. Uh, the bushings on both ends are the same. They're not a different size like some of them are. So some of them you got to make sure you get the right in end exactly there. But these is not. Both ends are the same. But you still want it to be in order. That way all the wood grain lines up. Because this is going to go just like that. Like I say, this is the uh, sea life from wood turnings. And I got the seahorse. So this is going to be my wife's pen when I get it made. And we, she don't know I'm making them yet. So as always, when I got one for a special gift for somebody that I hadn't turned in a while because I hadn't turned any of this style in a few months. So I'll turn the first ones off camera to make sure I know how to do it so I don't mess up the one blank that I wanted to turn for her because you, I could use any blanks and I know she would be happy with any of them but I just I want her to have the best that I got so uh, I practiced a, a few of them before I did this one and like I say, it's not really that hard, but I always like to do that first. But, now it'll go in there like so. Unscrew the, the butt end off of there. Put that in the other end. Sure you're all the way in then you get your center band that's pretty good there shove it on as far as you can this we got a taper Stick the taper in first. And shove it on. Now all the pressed ends is in. Do that. We'll get the roller ball ink. And this seems to be the ones that I've used of these have been quality ink cartridges as well with this from wood turning so i don't know i hadn't looked too close to see this one make sure everything looks like it goes together we'll take Put the seahorse in the water looking part. And there it is. Alright, I got a couple more to make and then I'll show them all to you. Alright, now y'all know how the whole process works. Tell me what you think about some of these pens. Do you like them or not? Uh, I really love the coloring in these things and i love the the sea life on there uh, now that i got get my videos done my wife can go ahead and steal the one she wants so tell me what you think about it uh if you like it thumbs up if you don't thumbs down that's okay and i will catch y'all on the next one